So let's begin by taking a look here at number one, part A. We're going to try to graph some piecewise functions together and try to recap how exactly this process worked when we probably learned it a long time ago. So you'll see up here I have uh, two different xy axes kind of set up, and I'm going to start here on the first one to try to graph what 1a is all about. So remember that with a piecewise function, what I'm going to be given is multiple different formulas to determine the y values of the graph, and I know which of these formulas I'm supposed to be using based on what value of x I'm plugging in. So really quickly here, we'll just go ahead and try to plot just a couple quick points here, maybe in this first picture. So notice here that if I'm picking a value that is greater than zero, that is I'm picking a positive value, I automatically have a formula to determine the corresponding y-coordinate. So notice if I pick something like the value of one, and I plug it in for x, I should use the top formula, the y-coordinate is three. If I plug in an x value of two, I still use this top formula, and it says that the y-coordinate is three. In fact, no matter what I plug in for x, as long as it's greater than zero, the top y-coordinate is always three. It's really easy to figure out these points. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually mark where zero is going to be, because I'm gonna go ahead and create a dot, or at least a open circle, above what would happen here at zero. So notice I'm going to go up here, right where the y-coordinate of 3 is, I'm going to put an open circle there. So there's no point right there on the graph. Remember, I can't use x as a 0 in this top formula, but I can use anything that's greater than that. And as I go over, I recognize that I only get y-coordinates of value 3. So this is kind of the graph of the first portion, or the first piece, of this particular function. Now notice if I want to start graphing the next piece of this function, that's really easy as well. I can just go ahead and start plugging in any value from zero and lower into this function. So clearly if I plug in the value of zero, I get back, well, zero. That's really easy, zero, zero. Notice if I plug in the value of negative one, I get the value of two back, because I have to square and then multiply by two. So a point here of negative 1, say, comma 2, let's just eyeball that and say that it's right around there, is going to be on this graph as well. And of course I can tell that this must be the graph of a parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch out what the rough parabola would look like. And this is a picture now of 2x squared, but only for x's that are less than or equal to 0. In total, I'm actually done now. I don't really need the table of values, so I'll just get rid of it. But here's my total picture. Notice, though, that this picture actually is a function. That's important. And I can tell it's a function because it passes the vertical line test. Notice if I was to draw any vertical line as I go across this, I'm only ever going to hit one point on the function at a time. Notice, this is why at x equals 0, it's really important that I have one point and one non-point, or one hole, in the graph. It's very important that you remember this, because when we go ahead and graph piecewise functions, we do, of course, need to make sure that they are functions. So let's take a look here at part b and maybe try to do the exact same sort of thing. Okay. Here I have 3x minus 5. That's the first thing I'm going to try to graph, and I can graph that whenever x's are greater than 1. I can go ahead and imagine again making a table of values to help me if I need it. So let's start by plugging in 1, and even though that's not allowed, I know I'll just put a hole on the graph there. So if I plug in the value of 1, I can see that I get back negative 2. So if I plug in 1, I get back negative 2, and I'm not going to put a dot there, I'm going to put a hole. Okay, now I can see that, oh, well, what would happen if I plug in a value bigger than 1? Maybe something like 2. Well, that would get me 6 minus 5, that's a 1. So, again, I'm just trying to eyeball this stuff in the picture. You don't have to have an absolutely perfect picture here. But I know that this is the equation of a line, and so I can play connect the dots, boom, there's a line. Notice that I'm stopping right at the value when x is 1. Well, now let's look what happens with the middle piece. This says your y-coordinate is always 2 as long as your x is between negative 2 and 1. Well, let's say that negative 2 is over here on the x-axis. 
Then the y coordinate of 2, which we'll just say is up here, notice I would have a filled in dot on the graph at negative 2. When I plug in negative 2, I get back 2. And I'm not allowed to plug in positive 1. So up here, I'm going to get a hole. And on every x value in between, I know that I always get back that value of 2. There it is. Middle piece has been graphed. Now I'll look at the last piece. Ooh, and I notice that this is a quadratic that should be opening downward, because it's got a negative leading coefficient. Well, let's go ahead and plug in some values to it. If I plug in something like negative 2, notice I'm going to have to put a hole in the graph, because negative 2 technically isn't allowed here. But notice if I did plug in negative 2 here, I would end up with something like a, let's see, negative 2 squared is 4, and then I have to put the negative back on it. So I get to negative 4. Let's say that that's right here. I'm going to go ahead and move my uh, table of values out of the way just so I can more easily graph this. Well, now I can go ahead and maybe graph another point. Let's just say I do negative 3. Let's say negative 3 is right here. Notice if I get negative 3, I'm going to get a point even further down, maybe way down here at, let's say, negative 9. And I know that these should connect not in a straight line, but in the shape of like a curved parabola. So notice, maybe I have something that kind of goes like this. It's curving. I could imagine maybe a parabola there that would start at 0, 0. So this is a picture, then, of the function f of x. And notice, if I go and I imagine moving across this, drawing vertical lines, at every point, I should have, or at, at every x value, I should have only one point. Can you tell on here, though, where I may have made a slight error? Where on here do I have two points on the picture for a single x value? Well, you might notice it's right here at negative 2. Notice I put a dot right here and a dot right there, and that's not allowed. And so if I find stuff like this, I might have to go back and double check where was negative 2 supposed to be plugged in. It looks like it's supposed to be plugged in here on the middle piece, so I should have a dot up there. But down here, I was not allowed to plug that in. And so I should really rethink about drawing this with an open circle and completing the rest of the picture. Now I have a function all the way across, and I'm good to go. For the last example here, this is kind of strange, because if you look at uh, part C, it doesn't look like I have a piecewise function at all. I have this absolute value. But here's something kind of interesting. Every single absolute value can be rewritten as a piecewise function. And I'll show you how this works. Notice, if x was a number that was positive, or and I, let me rephrase, if x was a number that was, say, 3 or greater, if x was a number that's 3 or greater, let's think about numbers like that and what would happen in these absolute value bars. Well. If I plugged in a number like 3, I get 0 on the inside of the absolute value. And when I absolute value it, I get a result of 0. Well, then the absolute value bars don't really do anything there. What if I plug in a number bigger than 3, like a 4 or a 5? Notice if I plug those in, I'm going to get a value like a 1 or maybe a 2 or something even larger. And again, though that's going to be the value inside the absolute value bars. And so again, the absolute value bars won't really do anything. In the case when I have my x value actually being greater than or equal to 3, I really don't need the absolute value bars because the top will already come out positive. However, if it's the case that x is going to be less than 3, not even equal, but just less than 3, what can you tell me about x minus 3? Well, shouldn't that produce a negative number now? Try it out. What if I plugged in something like a 2 or a 1 or a 0 or a negative 10, right? If I plug in values less than 3, I get negative results. And so there, the absolute value bars would have a role to play. However, the role of absolute value bars is simply to take something that's negative and make it positive. So I can actually do that very, very simply by just stating if I took my value of x minus 3 and I put it in a set of parentheses and multiplied it by a negative 1, doesn't that 
already take the value that's negative and instantly make it positive? It does. So this is a really, really useful tool that we have. We can take an absolute value and turn it into a piecewise function by thinking about when will the inside of the absolute value be positive or zero, and when will it be negative. I'm going to leave it to you, though, to actually try to graph this piecewise function. And remember, you can check your solution in the skills check solutions that are posted up in Blackboard.